Well, I hope everybody liked that new uh, intro. I'm trying out different ones till I get it good. Um, welcome to Take Two Radio tonight. I have with me my lovely co-host, Dawn. How hello, are you, Dawn? Hello, everyone. I'm great. How are you, Pam? I'm doing good. I'm excited. Today we have the multi-talented <laughs> Eric Martinez. Uh-huh. Welcome, Eric. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm really good. Good. Um, it's it's going to be an exciting show because we have lots to talk about, and I'm almost stumped on where to start. <laughs> uh, I guess let's start with when you were a little child, what did you want to be when you grew up? You know, I I, I mean, oddly enough, I, I mean, or actually ironically enough, I've always wanted to be in the entertainment business. I mean, even when I was little, I would dance around my living room. Um, um, I... To be honest, I wanted to be just like Michael Jackson. Uh, oh, really? To, yeah, I wanted to dance, and I wanted to be on stage, and, you know, I, I just, I've always kind of wanted to be in the spotlight, you know, so um, even even uh, to my own family's dismay sometimes, I would take over the room every every chance I got. didn't matter if it was a, I mean, you know, as sad as it is to say, I even performed at my grandfather's funeral. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. everybody was... Yeah, everybody was in tears, and I broke out in a, a Michael Jackson moonwalk and the robot, and I wanted to, uh, I just always wanted to take over, so that's, that's ever since I was little. That's actually cute. I mean, you probably helped a lot of people that day with with your little <laughs> dance moves there. Yeah, Did yeah. you do anything in school? You know, in school I was in, I, I, I always wanted to participate in the plays and I was always I couldn't wait for like show and tell because it meant I got to, I got to get up in front of the classroom. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I wanted I wanted show and tell to be every day, and you know, and it was funny because after a while, you know, when I was in elementary school, uh, at the end of every day, it got to the point where the teacher would give me the last six minutes to get up in front of class uh, and either tell a story or read a book or you know, I, as long as I was in front of people, I was happy. Wow. Well, I give you kudos for that because I'm, even though I'm okay on the phone, I'm good on the phone, but to get up in front of a class to do something, oh, my God, I would stress out so much. <laughs> if I had to read a paper, I would put my my face behind the paper and read it. I, I would be so embarrassed and so stressed. So I give you a lot of credit for being able to do that. I guess you have to be born with it sometimes. Well, I mean, I think I think what it is, I just, you know, I've never been afraid to kind of put myself out there. So, and I think that's that's uh, bid me well. You know, especially right. in the future when things started getting a little bit, you know, more serious and a little bit tougher sometimes. Because you know, this is a business that can can break you pretty quick if you're not thick skinned. You know, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And I think maybe that's what helps too with you having so many projects to work on in different areas. That you're going to keep busy, whether you get a yes or a no for something that you went for. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Somebody's always going to say yes to you in some field. Right, right. You know, and with with the stuff that I do, I mean, I, I just really feel like this is a business where, you know, you have to be multifaceted. If if mm-hmm. uh, if you concentrated just on one, like, you know, as much as I love, I mean, my first love is acting, and that's what I'm truly, truly, truly passionate about. But if I had to wait around, you know, in between films or sometimes in between even auditions, you know, I would literally have nothing to do sometimes for months. So uh-huh. I gotta, I have to, you know, really keep myself busy and I try to keep everything in perspective, you know, and just know that, you know, every day brings a new new uh, opportunity and a new challenge. Exactly, exactly. And always, as they always say, when one door closes, another one opens, and that's so right. true. Uh-huh. You just have to look for it. You can't, you know, close your eyes. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, your first uh, TV show was that lockdown. Was that My, the first yeah, well, thing you did? No, the very one of the very very first things I did was a uh, um, an independent film uh, called Life in the Shadows, and that was uh, God, that was many years ago. And, yeah, you're right, not and that old. That, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it, it seems like it though, you know, especially in this business. <laughs> You know, but I got, um, you know, I did that, and then I started doing some local commercials, and I did a, a few a few commercials. Uh, but my first real 
um, I would say my first real break was I did a video uh, for Tupac Shakur called I Wonder oh. If Heaven's Got a Ghetto. And uh, oh. after that, oh, I wow. was just like, yeah, after that, I was just like, you know what, I, I want to continue doing this forever. You know, this is what I, I felt like this is what I was meant to do. And, you know, and you being on that, that video with him, what kind of impact did that have on you when um, when Tupac passed away? Uh, you know, I I mean, he, he's a, he, you know, he was a great guy, and his mother was a wonderful woman. And the video, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I had actually met Pac about a, about six months before he passed away, um, and we actually did that video after he passed. So oh, okay. being Yeah, being with his mom on the set of that video was, was pretty amazing. And, you know, we all got to sit around and kind of tell stories. And, I you know, I met Pac in Vegas. And uh, it was uh, it was a good time. We got to hang out with him for the evening, and um, you know, he, I mean, he was just a as, as much as everybody thought he was a thug gangster. He was he was a very 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 intelligent dude. He was very kind hearted. He was he was he really was a good person to be around. It's kind of a shame that he was um, made a product of his character, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. And I wonder oftentimes too if um you know. People like Pac, you know, if they get, uh, you know, misstereotyped, if you will, and, you know, I know they have a persona they put forth as part of their branding and image, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, they, they're just like anybody else, you know. They right. go home, kick their feet up, and they're pretty cool people to know. It's just, it's kind of what society yeah. labels them as sometimes, I believe. So, uh, well, that's a great, great memory for you to be able to have had that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, I... That's one thing I, I, you know, it's one of those times where, you know, it's one of those things where I, I often look back and I think to myself like, wow, man, you know, what a, what a great thing to have met somebody who, who's been so influential. Even in today's music, you know, you mentioned Tupac's name. I mean, there's colleges around this country that have classes on his lyrics. And, I mean, you know, just just knowing that I had, you know, an opportunity to meet someone like that is, is amazing. Right? Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, well, you know, I was curious you have done both television and movies and what do you find um it's obvious you love it you know entertaining but do, which do you like better doing movies or doing tv you know i like doing I, I like doing movies i mean i love doing tv tv is it's kind of the uh fast turnaround but you know movies is kind of my thing i love doing movies you know um mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot more there's a lot more leverage that you have in the film business as opposed to the TV business, uh, I think. And, you know, the projects that you can do, they're, they're not as, you know, they're not as limited in, in, in time, I feel. Like, you know, TV shows, you know, especially like the shows I've, I've been involved in, In Plain Sight, Scoundrels, and those types of shows. I mean, they're so fast-paced. You get in, you get on set, you do your lines, you get out. I mean, there's right. no... There's mm-hmm. no uh, it, it's almost like, unless you're part of the crew, there's no camaraderie, there's there's no kind of rapport you can build with anybody. Um, right. You know, Virginia Madsen, who is one of my favorite, most favorite actresses, she I was lucky enough to, yeah, yeah, I got to work with her on Scoundrels, and out of everybody that was on set, her and I got to talk the most, and it was just really, really good for us to be able to have that, you know, that time together, and, you know, it's kind of one of those very rare times when you get that opportunity, because usually, like I said, you're rushed to set, you're rushed off set, and then they got to move on to the next scene. Um you know, not like we're a film, you know, in movies, uh, you can, you know, you have time to hang out, you spend weeks, sometimes months together, right. uh, you know, so it, it, I like film a lot better. Do you have a favorite movie that you've done? You know, I, I gotta say it was probably <clears throat> my breakout role in Love Lies Bleeding with Christian Slater. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christian, he's also, I, I feel like he's one of the most underrated actors out there. He's, in my opinion, he's like our He's like our century's Jack Nicholson. Oh, um, he, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, have he, to agree he, with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's very, he's he's a very in-depth actor. He he he's a, a joy to work with. He's a great person, um, and I I it, I had a blast working with him. You know, and it was funny because he he told me, he said, you know, Eric, when we're on set, you're like a scary scary dude. Yeah. And then the minute they say cut. You're like the most fun-loving, nice little guy I've ever been around. Like, you know. So, yeah, he, he was fun. He was a blast to work with. 
Well, that's a compliment then. You do your roles very well. You play the bad guy. And I notice that you do that a lot in a lot of these movies. Is that your favorite type to play? Well, you know, I mean, a lot of people are calling me the next Danny Trejo or the the Latin Joe Pesci because of those types of movies. (laughs) But I am... you know, I like I like those films. I, I like the contrast because I like for people to meet me and go, wow, man, you're nothing like the characters that you play. And I right. get that all the time. But, you know, obviously I, I don't want to be typecast. I, 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 wanna, I want the opportunity to dig my teeth into some comedy, and I'd like to dig my teeth into some drama. You know, um, I would love to do, you know, a love story, you know, but I think that's all going to come within time. I, I got some movies coming out. And I think it's going to give people a really nice look at who I am as an actor um, outside of me just playing a bad guy, you know? Right. You have quite a few of them coming out. Uh, the yes. Boys of Abu Ghraib. I don't know how to say that yes. word. Is it Grab Or Ghraib? Where you play Mr. Clean? Uh-oh, hey. we lost Eric. <laughs> yeah, we lost him. I was like, well, where did he go? I was like, well, okay, did she say something wrong? <laughs> um, he might have been calling from a cell phone, and you know how that goes. Okay, we got him back. Let me go. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, that's okay. <laughs> I was waiting for you to correct me on how to say the the name of the movie, and then I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's actually the boys of Abu Ghraib, and right. um, and that's with Sean Astin, and I got mm-hmm. to do a cameo appearance, a cameo appearance on that. Uh, I play one of the uh, Iraqi insurgents uh, that they captured, and um, again, great movie, great cast, had a blast work, working with uh, Sean. Um, I have uh, Sorrow coming out where I play a serial killer by the name of Dale Rogers. Um, I have uh, Life that's Outside. Sorrow. Gonna... Yeah, that's right. Sorrow. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're going to be shooting that in Houston. I have uh, Life Outside coming up in the U.K., uh, Fighting Back coming up, uh, Serviceman coming up. And um, found out actually today uh, that I'm that the Vampire Diaries is uh, looking at me. So <gasps> Really? Uh, right. Yeah, Vampire Diaries and as well as The Walking Dead, both of uh, oh my gosh show, showed a, a lot of interest in me and you oh, know oh that's great yeah, yeah so I'm I'm hoping they they come through that would be wonderful because you know how popular they are right right exactly zombies exactly. and vampires <laughs> right I know I know really and that seems to be all the rage right now too so yeah. um, well you know speaking to your movie Sorrow and uh, you know you're going to be playing a serial killer. How much, you know, work goes into preparing for a role like that? Because obviously you're a nice guy, you know, and mm-hmm. and uh, but how do you get yourself into character for a role, you know, to be a serial killer? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, I am, um, you know, in, in doing this movie, I've been I've been really kind of doing my research and, you know, and I've, I've been looking at guys like Jeffrey Dahmer, um, uh, Charlie, you know, Charlie Manson, um Guys like, you know, guys who are notorious for, you know, going in pretty much into the depths of of uh, physical hell with people. And, mm-hmm. you know, it is – it's a scary process. I We shot we shot the uh, pilot to it uh, here about eight months ago in Utah. And for the four days that I was on set, you know, I, I didn't I didn't really want anyone talking to me. I didn't want anyone to, to – you know, even when we were not shooting – I just kind of wanted to be left alone because when you allow yourself to go to those places, you know, it, it's uh, it's pretty intense. I mean, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you have to really be comfortable with how you're feeling, you know, mm-hmm. because you you have to be comfortable with violence and you have to be comfortable 